In a simplistic way, I think in the private sector, it's dealt with more quickly because it's a financial imperative. Yeah, I agree. You can't afford to have people we, that aren't pulling no. their weight, mm. and you can't afford to have people that are being um, destabilising the yeah. team or being yeah, disruptive yeah. influences. I think we've got some, some agencies and organisations that aren't even having the cor courageous discussions. The other thing I've noticed is where they're very quick to say, no, we've had training and we do the courageous and here are the statistics, we've actually performance managed and dealt with these people. Yeah. And and it's sort of, so therefore we're doing okay. I'm looking at best practice in the um, private sector, which is, no, no, it's there's a cost to actually yes, exit right. and yeah. recruit, yeah. but we will do this, we'll do it in a focused way, and then if that doesn't work, we'll deal with it, and and if we have to deal with it, the, the we'll deal with it with appropriate process, and if there's a PG, so be it, and we will, you know, it's, it's very, um, it's not fearful, whereas no. I see in the public sector a sort of fearfulness mm. of it, and it, which gets into reputational issues and political sensitivity, etc. So if you say in uh, a agency, your for annual performance reviews, we're looking at the bell curve. There mm -hmm. should be a forced distribution. Yeah, you yeah, shouldn't yeah. have yeah. more yeah. than 10% yeah, excellent. You should yeah. have a yeah. big bulk in the middle yeah. and you should have some at the tail. Yeah. Yeah. And then I want to see what you're doing with the tail. Absolutely. Yeah. And they should be being performance managed in an active way yeah. with a timeline on it. I think a, a reframing of performance management would be helpful. Mm. Um, again a generalisation, currently performance management tends to be seen as something that's pulled out in moments of slight um, desperation sometimes when when things aren't working as well. Uh, the formal, rather than performance management being seen as an end-to-end, -end, you know, building on strengths as well as the plugging the caps. Yeah. Um, so my view is that, um, yeah, people say, oh, so-and-so's under performance management. Um, and they're meaning it in a sort of a corrective mm. last ditch sense mm. rather than it being exactly that end-to-end -end enabling a standard business process, um, regular review, feedback, um, um, how, you know, our, our both, our data and our anecdotal data is that those, you know, regular feedback development conversations are less common than more common. Um, how are those, how to get those just as a matter of course, I think is a, you know, it's a culture shift for the public service. If I was able to say I made a contribution to um, the whole notion of development conversations, good quality, timely feedback being a core part of a manager's role, I think that would make a difference. Some of the cases, because you, we do, you get to that tricky area where is it sheer performance or have we let ourselves get into this position? Because you know, if you haven't addressed it for 15 years, it becomes a normal behaviour. And also some people have actually got issues, health issues and other things where we think actually we should try and help you out with dignity. You know? And the other side is too, if I can get people out, if they're a bad performer, then as far as I'm concerned, you've got to get out and I want you out and I want it public. But for some people, they're just bad performers because of other external issues. And for them, my, my focus is to really try and work with dignity with them. And that actually shows the other staff that if you have got issues that may be affecting your work, be it you know, at home or, or illness, you can put your hand up now and you, and you could be exited in a, in a you know, dignified way. Mm -hmm.